Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us and welcome to the post-fight press conference here at Bellator's 100th event. For those that are joining us on the live stream, we welcome you as well to Phoenix, Arizona, still on site here at Grand Canyon University Arena. Fighters are just behind us. We'll open it up for questions for those members of the press after our opening comments. And of course, uh, Mr. Ebney and the fighters will be available for those questions both during and after the press conference if there are more. And we end it before you get yours done. So at this time, let's uh, open it up with uh, comments from our CEO, the founder, the chairman, Mr. Bjorn Rebney. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Um, I will jump right into the fight. Sprint Weedman fought for us, has fought for us at 70 and has done extremely well for us at 70, had high hopes in the last 70 tournament, broke a hand, has fought for us very successfully at 55 as well, um, and put on just a great technical, a calm technical performance, as efficient as you could hope to be in the cage, little time, little damage. I always tell the guys, every time we talk, I tell everybody, look, you don't get paid by the hour. If you can end the fight early and you can end it without any damage, that's the best possible way to do it. So, Brent, congratulations, uh, great victory. You look like a million dollars. Uh, thanks, Bjorn. I'd like to thank uh, my opponent, Justin. Uh, that was the toughest submission of my career. Uh, he fought that thing tooth and nail, and uh, he deserves a lot of credit. He's a very tough guy. I expect to see him back real soon doing big things. And I'd like to thank Bellator for bringing me back. I feel great uh, back at my home weight and doing it the right way. And I, f I feel fantastic. I'm ready to show you guys more. Yeah, it was really, really good fight, Brent. Good job. You know, uh, I want to say Brent's one of the toughest guys in the tournament. If you look at the paperwork, you know, it says it all there. So it was an honor to fight Brent. And uh, I've been in a lot of tight spots in my career, and that was one of the tightest. I almost slipped out a couple times. And I, I bet after the third crack, I finally had to tap out. But, uh, yeah, it's a great fight, and it was an honor working for Bellator. We, uh, we had a couple of guys fall out of this tournament. We, uh, we lost Riddle and we lost Scanlon out of the U.K. Ron Kessler stepped up, what, three weeks ago? Two and a half, three weeks ago, something like that. Um, is a guy we've had our eye on for a while and, and we're looking at for future tournaments. Stepped up against Sergio, who's a tremendously talented fighter. Um, a fun fight to watch from both of you. Sergio will be back with us fighting again in, in uh, short order. But... Uh, great victory, and, uh, and great victory given how short a time period you had to get ready for this tournament and this drive. So congrats. Thanks. I just want to uh, thank Bellator for the opportunity and uh, thank my opponent. He's a very tough guy, and uh, I literally had to leave it all in the cage today, and uh, I'm sure he'll be back stronger. Thank you. É, gostaria de agradecer mais uma oportunidade o Bellator, ao Ben, fazer parte do Bellator, a, da participação do 100, do evento 100. E dizer que eu tenho treinado dois meses para um atleta, a, quero dar o parabéns aí o, o adversário que aceitou faltando uma semana. We were, uh, I was talking with Rick. Uh, Rick Hahn, and, and I think of all the fighters we've got um, in the organization, which I think caps out at about 165 or 170 right now, Rick Hahn probably contacts me more than anybody about fighting. I get more contact from Rick Hahn, uh, texts, uh, emails, Twitter messages consistently, and he's ready to go. He'll go at 85, he'll go at 70, he'll go at 55. I think it may just be the mentality of Olympic athletes that have been wrestlers or judo players that they're just used to going all the time. But uh, Rick, uh, we had one guy fall out, and Rick just would not leave me alone, got back in here at 70. Um, <clears throat> and against Herman Torado, who is a very talented young fighter who will be back here uh, competing again, broke a hand today, but will be back um, doing good things inside the Bellator cage. Um, but Rick, great victory. Congratulations, great victory, and your persistence is uh, once again paying off. Thank you, Bjorn. Um, and that's definitely a no on the 85. <laughs> Not going up anymore. But uh, thank you for uh, putting me in, uh, you know, last, last minute at six days' notice. But, uh, you know, I was getting ready for a fight anyways. Uh, so uh, I'm just happy to be in, be in here again and, uh, 
competing and, and fighting, and it's, it's what I do. So uh, thank you all. Oh, just want to say, um, sorry, my, my opponent, Herman Toronto. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, tough kid, you know, very strong, as you, as you guys can see. Um, so it was, it was an honor. Thank you. I want to say uh, thank you to Bellator. Thank you to Bjorn for giving me this opportunity to be here. Uh, Rick Hans, the toughest opponent I faced in my career so far, and uh, I gave him everything I had to finish him, and I uh, broke my hand in the second round, but I uh, kept trying to push forward and fight hard, and I uh, look forward to coming back and fighting hard again. Um, gentleman on my right, Vaughn Anderson, I've had a, uh, had a lot of people come up to me and describe him uh, as the best kept secret in mixed martial arts. Um, and I think given how good he is and given the record that he's established, um, speaks volumes to the level um, that John Copenhaver, the war machine, has elevated his game to. Um, we, sometimes John gets a lot of credit for a lot of different things and gets attention for a lot of different things, and I try to draw people back to the fact that you're looking at an amazingly talented 170-pound fighter who has the full spectrum of the game. He's got an unbelievable submission game. He's got a crucifix that he almost finished a fight with again today for the second time. You rarely see that. His stand-up is, is really evolved. Um, he was trending worldwide and trending uh, domestically on Twitter as he was fighting today. Uh, just a great performance. Looked completely calm and at peace in the cage, and that's what uh, you know. That's what I had been looking forward to seeing out of him since the first time I signed him back in 2008. So congratulations on a great win. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, I know I had a lot, do a lot of crazy things and uh, made a lot of dumb mistakes, but uh, you always kept faith in me and bring me back, and I appreciate that. Um, I just want to thank my my coaches. Joe Vargas, my boxing coach, my jiu-jitsu coach, Barry Yoshida, and my teammates, you know, um, for sticking by me. Without you guys, I couldn't be here. All my training partners at home. And, um, hey, man, I'm just, I'm stoked to have got the W. I was sick. I overcame that. You know, I got the W. It was a harder fight than I expected. And uh, I look forward to the semifinals against Kessler, man. It's going to be a good fight, and I, I can't wait to get back in there. I'm stoked. Um, uh, going into this fight, um, I really did expect to win, and uh, I, you know, War Machine didn't do anything that uh, I wasn't expecting, but his power and explosiveness uh, was something that I underestimated. Um, before the fight, I said a lot of nasty things, and um, that he was upset about that means that, uh, you know, my strategy worked, um, and it probably also makes the victory sweeter for him. Um, and I hope to be back soon. Um, Ben's not here, uh, so I, but I did, would like to say a few words about Ben. Ben has been with this, Ben Son has been with this organization for many, many years. Um, huge heart, unbelievable competitor. Uh, you could see it after the first couple of knockdowns and the damage that was done to his the cut over one eye and the, the hematoma on another that was completely shut. Um, it, sometimes expletives get or, or definitions get used to describe fighters in terms of heart and warrior and the like, but um, Ben Saunders deserves those, uh, those explanations as much as anybody or those descriptions as much as anybody. Um, Doug Lima <laughs> is an amazingly talented welterweight fighter. And you saw it on display today. His striking, I believe his striking is, if not the top striking in the world at 170 pounds, it's surely amongst the top two or three. Uh, he's an incredibly dominant stand-up fighter, and I know he's working um, on some of the other aspects of his game as well. But he's just unbelievable to watch. He's a human highlight reel. I think probably three or four of our top ten knockouts now are Doug Lima knockouts. So um, an incredibly talented fighter and a great humble guy as well. And uh, just a spectacular win tonight. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Bjorn, for the words. Uh, thank you for bringing me back to the finals. You know, after the back-to-back -back injuries, uh, very happy. You know, to be back. You know, it was an honor fighting a guy like Ben again. You know, it's one of my toughest fights we just had today. You know, come out with some injuries. Uh, you know, thank you all my coaches, me, my training partners. You know, I couldn't couldn't have done it without him. And uh, just waiting for the next step, man. Very happy to be back. Um, you know. Just very thankful for everything, and I appreciate all the support. Thank you. Uh, 
Gentlemen, thank you very much. For those that may have just recently joined us on the live stream, we welcome you. We're still on site here in Phoenix, Arizona, Grand Canyon University Arena. Opening comments have uh, concluded, so let's open it up for questions for members of the press. Here, gentlemen, it's your first question. Hi, this is for uh, Bjorn. Just real quick, um, the status of Ben Saunders. Is he still here or did he go to the hospital? No, he, w he went to the hospital. Um, I don't have a report yet. I'm waiting on a report from, uh, from Ryan and our team who accompanied him out there. So the um, second I get it, I'll let you know. Okay. And uh, for War Machine, congratulations on the win. Um, it was your first tourney fight. And, uh, I mean, what did you think of your performance overall? Um, you know, uh, until, I, until you see the fight, you don't know how it went, you know. In my mind, I never perform as well as I, as I uh, want to. And sometimes when I watch the tape, I'm, I'm surprised at how well I did and how good I look, you know what I mean? So right now, I'm, uh, I'm not really happy with it. But, uh, you know, it could change when I watch the tape. So, you know, i got to wait till I see it. Uh, I mean, you said you were sick. What were you sick with? And, I mean, did, do you feel like that affected your performance at all? Uh, I had a si uh, sinus infection and a little bit of bronchitis. Uh, the day of the weigh-in, I woke up feeling really good. I don't think it affected me at all today. Actually, one time during the fight, I, uh, I was on top of Vaughn, and I, I coughed up a giant gross bloody loogie right into the mat. So maybe, maybe fucking, maybe Lima stepped on it or something, bro. Sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> but no, nah, I, I don't think it, it, uh, it hurt my performance. Vaughn was just tougher than I thought, you know. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next questions. For Douglas Lima, you had mentioned you had hurt your hand or broke your hand. Is that? Do you think it's broken? Um, yeah, I'm not going to know for sure and try to do the x-ray, but I'm pretty sure it's busted up. You know, it's the third time I break this, the same hand, you know, if it is broken. But I'll find out when I do the x-ray next week when I get back home. Okay, and you just won the welterweight championship or the welterweight tournament. Uh, being Askren, uh, are you looking forward to that fight, or do we know if there's... Well, definitely looking forward to the title fight. You know, I don't know if Askren is staying or leaving. You know, that's up to Bellator and Bjorn. So I'm just waiting, you know, to hear what's going to happen. Um, you know, if he leaves, I think it's going to be the winner of this tournament. You know, we fight for the belt. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, we will know for sure. Bjorn probably got the better answer. <laughs> My question's for Bjorn. Um, congratulations, Bellator 100. Uh, we've got pay-per-view coming up soon. Um, what's next between now and Bellator 200? Whew. Wow. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, a lot of growth, a lot of expansion, um, a lot of big announcements internationally. I mean, it just it seems like a blink of an eye ago that we, were, we had done the first event back in 2009. It, it literally seems like 20 minutes ago. I mean, I can remember the announcers. I can remember the arena. I can remember the fights. You know, I remember Toby Amata with the um, inverted triangle on George Masvidal like it was 20 minutes ago. So, I, I, I mean, there's – given who our partners are right now with Viacom and with Spike and given what's happening internationally and in sponsorship support, I mean, great things. Um, and to what level it will go remains to be seen. But, I'm, you know, I'm extremely hopeful all the right pieces of the puzzle are in place. We've got some unbelievably talented fighters, many of whom you saw here tonight. You can watch more of them next week and the week after and the week after until we get to the pay-per-view. So – um, you know, big things. I mean, you know, big, big, well thought out strategic moves that are happening, and, and the fuel to that whole. And I'll shut up. But the fuel to that whole machine is these guys. You know, I mean, the cold, the the reality of this thing is, is that without, you know, the the John Copenhavers and the Doug Limas and the Hans and the Weedmans and the Kessler, these guys are what fuel it all, because that's that's what people are tuning in to see. You know, they're not tuning in to see me or listen to me drone on to you about our future for the next hundred events. They're coming to see these guys. So I, I, that's of all the things I'm most excited about. It's that Sam Kaplan and Zach Light and our talent development team keep making these divisions deeper and deeper and deeper, and more guys keep breaking into the top ten, and now the top two and three in the world, because that's the fuel to everything we do. So I, I think the, with this kind of evolution in terms of fighters, I think the future looks very, very bright, and I think our potential is unlimited. So that's a long answer to a short question. Thank you very much for the members of the media. Next question. Uh, one last call for questions. Uh, just for Bjorn, uh, following up on what Douglas was saying, um, if, if Ben Askren's situation obviously plays out and he, and he ends up leaving, do you think you'll promote Douglas as the champion right away or will he face one of these four men? You know, it's a good question. I, w I really wanted to try to give 
the whole situation with Ben, who I've been, you know, been talking to of late, a situ- uh, an opportunity to kind of play itself out. So I don't know. I mean, I think if um, if Ben is with us, obviously, and if Ben stays with the organization and we re-sign him, then um, you know Doug would fight Ben in a rematch. But if that doesn't happen, my gut tells me that his analysis of what would happen probably makes the most sense. Is he just won a tournament? We'll wait to have this tournament run its course and then have one fight for a world title coming up sometime in season ten uh, next winter. Okay. So you know that that makes a ton of sense. Thank you. That made my life a lot easier. <laughs> and uh, you know we'll see what happens with Ben. If Ben's back, then he'd get Ben, and that we would um, go on in the winter of this tournament and fight the winner at Doug versus Ben. Hey, can I say something? Sure. I was gonna. I, my opinion was, you know, uh, Askren, he won a tournament. He got the belt. You know what I mean? He didn't have to fight no one. So I mean, uh, if he leaves, I think you should give the belt to Lima. <laughs> you know what I mean? For real. Oh, wow. you know, Askren didn't fight nobody. He won, the, he won the tournament, he got the belt. You know what I mean? So give the belt to him, and, you know, whoever wins out of us, we'll fight him for the belt, you know? That's my, that's my vote. That's another option. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, just to follow up for Douglas, then, I mean, which, which scenario would you prefer? Would you prefer to face Ben, or would you prefer to do new things? I prefer to have the belt on my waist, man. It doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> that's my goal, man. I got to get that title. And now, we'll make one last call for questions. If we hit, okay. Gentlemen, your final question. You had mentioned that you had a bunch of stuff internationally planned out. Can you tell us something that you have coming up for Season 10? Yeah. um, Well, right now, we just broke the 130-country barrier in terms of distribution of Bellator content, both live and live to tape, in terms of TV partners around the world. our, our numbers out of Brazil now are capping at about 2.5 million per show. Russia is doing north of that. So it, it's about that international expansion. As those numbers continue to be strong around the world, then ultimately we'll end up doing live events, probably South and Central America before we go anywhere else, and then subsequently probably Eastern Europe. Bjorn, thank you very much. And for the questions to our members of the media, we thank you as well. And uh, Bjorn, back to you for closing comments. Sure. Uh, Hawn Weedman and uh, John versus Ron, War Machine versus Ron Kessler, October 18th, Cedar Rapids, Iowa at the U.S. Cellular Center is the next step in the evolution of this tournament. So thank you guys, and thank you guys. And if you would please, one last round of applause for the fighters here at Bellator 100. For those joining us on the live stream, we thank you for joining us here in Phoenix, Arizona. For those joining us live, again, we thank you also, and we'll see you next time, next Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time at Bellator MMA. Good night, everybody.